two kinds of griha pravesham generally celebrated in India. When a woman gets married, she will do griha pravesham, that is she'll enter her husband's house, it's a big event. <coughs> Not anymore because they already live together, you know <laughs> Otherwise, it was a major event and they made this into a very sacred process because one thing is what kind of woman enters your house will determine the nature of your life and what kind of children you bear, your future, your progeny, how they live, everything is determined by what kind of woman enters, that's one thing. Another thing is how she enters also determines whatever kind, how she enters is very important. <laughs> so they wanted her to enter this house with utmost honor, with utmost auspiciousness because it's very important that she enters this house with love. It's very important she enters this house wanting to give herself totally to whatever that is. If she enters with something else in her mind and in her heart, she can ruin that family in million different ways. She can bear the wrong kind of children. They are aware of all these things. That if she enters this house with a certain type of emotion, tomorrow when she conceives, she will draw the wrong, wrong kind of life and she will bear the wrong kind of children, which will make you suffer for the rest of your life. Today, marriage means you thinking just of a little bit of romance between the two people. That's not how they looked at it. They looked at it as a partnership which is going to determine everything about them and their children and how the future of this family happens depends on what kind of woman and how she enters this house. So they made… they took elaborate care so that she enters the house properly. The other kind of griha pravesham is you built a new house and you want to… your family wants to move in. The design of the house, the aesthetics of the house, what kind of paint, what kind of this, all this is different, that is also important. But what kind of energy fills this space is very, very important. So before you live there, nobody ever sleeps in a house which is uninitiated. So it is a minor form of consecrating the space. Before moving into the house, the house must be… the space must be consecrated, otherwise people won't go and live there. All these things, that were done were essentially to create a certain enhanced sense of life energy so that the people who live in this house will naturally move towards well-being. And this sense of no human being should live in an unconsecrated space is something which is deep-rooted in this culture because it is just like if you plant something into this earth, only if the roots are sticking into a rich earth, will the flower and the fruit come out. If the earth into which these roots are sticking in are not… is not rich enough, is not enhanced enough to sustain life, flower and fruit will not come, even if it comes it will be too meager, it will never be a full-blown flowering, it'll never be a full-blown fruiting of the plant. Nowhere else on this planet have single generations of people risen to such glorious heights of knowing as this culture has known. But all that got fractured in the last few hundred years, in the last eight hundred to nine hundred years, this got badly fractured because of invasions and displacement of people and so many things. You can produce very great intellects, very great energy 
as human beings I'm saying, individual human beings carrying phenomenal sense of energy and intellect and capability, if you create large spaces of consecrated space, large consecrated spaces where the whole generation of people are in touch with that kind of energy in space. This fortune almost every family had because before they moved into homes, they did this, periodically they did something to enhance the house. This is part of almost every house. Every household at least once a year conducted the needed rituals and processes to see that the space in the house is enhanced.